I mean, you have some other issues with the transgender athletes doing stuff. I'm not even going to get into well, that right now. Well, I, I can. You can look at it and go, well, some of them that have transitioned, and I'm not saying they're bad people. Speaking of Texas, I think it is in Texas. You have the two Yeah, boys. I was getting ready to say it. I yeah. didn't mention it, but you have one who transitioned from, what, a female to a male? No, they were both females female. that went to females, and they're just they're, they're setting state and records they're dominating. Now in women's. This is our second video we're filming today. I don't know what the point was that I did, but uh, like and subscribe. Yeah, we're doing. Uh, we don't. I'm so used to the March Madness announcement. I'm out of it today. I'm I'm gone. So this is our second video we're filming. We're trying to keep these a little shorter because yeah, trying to keep them shorter the weather's today. supposed to be bad uh, over the weekend, so we can't film our challenges probably. Yeah, trying to do our challenges today and tomorrow. But uh, which is going to be even harder because spring break's going right now, so all the kids yes. are out running around. If we get out there early enough, we might be able to. But we want to get some international news for yeah. this video. Internationals, I always like talking about international. And, and it's really. good to do that with uh, soccer or yeah. football if you don't like using that yeah, word. If you don't like using that word, it's football. Uh. Spot. Doesn't matter what you call it. People still play it. Once you play it, you have fun. Doesn't matter. Even though the English people are the ones that came up with the word, <laughs> and they're the ones that are most hateful with that comment. So uh, I don't know. Sorry that you created your own <laughs> demise. Your own hatred. Now we want to talk about the U.S. women's team. Yep. Uh, probably gonna make somebody mad. Been struggling. Um, U.S. U.S. I say that every time, and nobody gets mad. And the only video that somebody got mad in was the March Madness Bracket Challenge where we're giving something out to somebody. I don't understand why they got mad at that, but... It's probably because the tournament closed. Well, I can't do it now, so I'll just dislike the video anyway. Can't say what I wrote down. The U.S. The US Women's National Team, they're in the She Believes Cup. Yeah, She Believes. Hashtag She Believes. And apparently they didn't believe hard enough because <laughs> they, lost, they, lost, they lost to England. Did they win a game? Don't think so. I think they lost every game. I can't remember. I don't know. I don't think they're in the cup anymore. But, uh... Kind of ridiculous. Uh, I think the USA women have their mind on other things. Here, here's what I want to get into with that. The USA women's national team are upset because they're not being paid enough. Uh, they actually have somewhat of a legitimate argument when you look at it, when it when it's compared to the men's national team with the World Cup. They made one million dollars for winning it, I think, and the men made twenty million for like getting halfway up the ladder. However. When you look at the attendance and the there's so many factors that go into it, it's not as simple as I didn't make enough money. There are, and you have to look at it I, now. What what I'm getting upset at is the smugness and, and the attitude and stuff like. It. If they played the men, they would lose, without a doubt. The reason why I say that is because we played. I had competitions against female sports teams, and this is nothing against female sports teams; it's just the way it is. Uh, on average, most men are stronger and faster than just female athletes. That's not a knock against females at all. No, it's just the way um, things are. I don't know we what played else to tell you. the girls' soccer team we had in high school. Um, had a better record than we did, and they kept talking down to us throughout the season. So we challenged them to a scrimmage, and we went out there, and in the first half. It was eight to nothing. Now, guess who was winning eight to nothing? It was the, it was the girls' yeah, team. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Uh, we were winning eight to nothing, and we were playing around. We weren't even trying. Um, we ended the game at halftime because it got to the point where it was just such such a blowout. The reason why is because we were so much faster and and stronger, and we weren't even being physical. It's it's just not. Uh, as a whole, it's not a contest. Now, are the women more accomplished than the men? Yeah. But that's because over the last few years, the women's sports teams haven't compared to one another across the world. And that's because women have more rights here. Yeah. They're, allowed, they, they're allowed more freedom to do things that, that they want to do, they do, should that be, they do here. They yeah, they should, should be allowed to do that. They should be. We're not saying that they shouldn't be, so don't think that. There's going to be always some crazy person out there. These people are misogynistic. No, we're not. We said yesterday that we're centrists. The thing is that what we're getting at is that as a whole, women usually cannot beat men in sports. No. You know, I looked up a thing one time because I was just curious about it. I compared, I, I wanted to see where the fast, the woman who won the gold medal in the 100 meter dash compared to men. And I found that the top ranking kid in Texas in high school 
track star, 6A, which is like their highest classification, ran faster in the 100-meter dash than the woman who won the gold at the last Olympics. That's a high school kid now. Mm -hmm. And she's the best in the world. It's, the muscles are different. It's just the way, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. There's nothing else to the, say. The it's just the way it is. The makeup of the athlete is completely different. Yeah. Um, it's just the way it is. I mean, you have some other issues with the transgender athletes doing stuff. I'm not even going to get into well, that right now. Well, I, I can. You can look at it and go, well, some of them that have transitioned, and I'm not saying they're bad people. Speaking of Texas, I think it is in Texas. You have the two Yeah, boys. I was getting ready to say it. I yeah. didn't mention it, but you have one who transitioned from, what, a female to a male? No, they were both females female? that went to females, and they're just they're, they're setting state and records they're dominating. In, in women's. It's not even close. So, and the other when girl athletes, I feel bad for. They're complaining about it. And I don't blame them for complaining about it. Look, you don't change. It's just like in chemistry class. You do not change the chemical makeup of something just because you change its physical trait. Um, it still remains the same. Its its chemical makeup is still the same. It's still yeah. a male. You should be able. You should have the ability to be who you want to be. But that doesn't mean you should be able it to compete mean, against who you want to compete mean, against. You know, you can get into certain things, certain political debates, or whatever. But when you, just because you transition to another thing and you call yourself something, doesn't make you that. And they changed from, they went from a male to a female. Yeah. And now they're competing against other females as with male makeup, with physical I, And I don't care if you take supplements to change you, you still don't get down to as low of a testosterone level as normal females have. And it's not fair to the females. It's not. I feel bad for them. That's who I feel bad for. So we're not saying anybody is better than anybody, and I'm not denying anybody's right to be what they want to be. You know how hard it, You know how hard some of these girls have worked well, to I, get to that point? I want to get into that. You have a right to do what you want to do. Yeah. I'm not saying you don't. We're not saying those people can't transition in what they want to do. They can do whatever they want to You can agree or disagree with that. I don't care. I really don't care. No. My point is, is what you get into when you start getting into those things is certain, well, yeah, political aspects, but also it's not fair to certain athletes. Because there's, there's other social <coughs> issues to look at, too, uh, like kind of outside of sports. you got things like female scholarships for college. you got mm -hmm. things like WIC, you know, for pregnant females uh, where they get, you know, money to, for babies, things like that. All these different social uh, aspects of it. You have to look at each thing. You, you have to. So, you can't just say one blanket statement. It so, doesn't work that way. So what we're getting, we're not trying to appease anybody. We're not trying to make anybody mad. We're not, we did not start this to be in somebody's favor. We give our honest opinion. Yeah. If you don't like that, you can leave it in the comment section down below. And again, if it's derogatory, we won't read it. Read it. If you like it or you dislike it, discuss it with us. We want to discuss it with you. We'll have discussions. That that's our that's our point. We we have discussions and things like that. Um, so you know, I, I'm sorry if you disagree, but that's just our opinion. One last thing before we go on to the next part, we need to get back to a point where we can start having discussions like that without name calling and violent things and you things know, like somebody that happening. Flipping out. It's fine to disagree. It's not that big of a deal. I'm starting to see that the most insecure people are the loudest people. Most of the and, time, And yeah. you can look at the people in society that are that way. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. Um, so. Ugh. So that was our little take on that. Our point is, is we don't get offended at things like that. No. You can call us whatever you want to. Doesn't hurt me any. Okay. So. Now we want to get into the European qualifiers. <laughs> yeah. Euros. Um, still, still more international news. Qualifications for the Euros, which, like we said, we, we cover big tournaments, so it's always... I, I think it's fun to cover international stuff. I like covering international things. I, I want to get into the top ten games that are coming up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's two games that are today, uh, March 21st. Uh, this is all on UEFA.com, the stories that we're getting from. I know we're not sponsored by them, and no, we don't own any of this stuff. No, this is I know just, UEFA goes crazy about their products whenever... This is just an article that they wrote about... Now, games. The first game was Austria versus Poland. Yep. Uh, Bayern teammates Alaba and Lewandowski. Yeah, playing, playing against, against each other. Of course, Alba versus defense. Of course, you know you got Alaba. I, I think when he plays international, I think he plays more in like a defensive midfield role. I think that's where they play him internationally because he's so good with the ball. 
I just don't know a lot of other players that Austria has that are... Now, the previous meeting, they tied one another one-to-one. -one. Okay. Um, in 2008, in the last Euro. Uh, their, their coach, Poland, Poland's coach, is a German-speaking man. Uh, his name sounds Polish. Jersey Brzezczak. I'm not even going to... Brzezczak, maybe? Brzezczak. I'm not even going to attempt <laughs> to even know that I know how to pronounce that. Um... You get some of those now, Eastern European names in there. Now, he has a lot of uh, playing time in Austria, so that may bode well for this game. So it's gonna, so Austria versus Poland is an interesting game. Yeah. Do um, you want to give a prediction, or do you care? Um, do we, should we give predictions? We'll give predictions. Uh, I'm going to say Poland wins this one. Yeah. One to nothing. Yeah, actually, I was going to say the exact same thing. I'm going to say Lewandowski gets a goal, 1-0 uh, Poland. Now, we go to the next game, Belgium versus Russia. This is still on March twenty first. Yeah, and of course we know Russia had the big, uh, the big run. They, they yes. were the, they were the hosting country. The now, last uh, up. now uh, Belgium is playing Russia, of course. Uh, wow, they drew uh, three three. And that's today. These two games are today. They drew three three mm -hmm. at their last friendly. So and that so was a she, high scoring game. Now it was in Russia. Uh, they both excelled in the World Cup, but I think that was because Russia was home. Uh, I think, I think Belgium wins this game. I really do. You know, Belgium is is really really solid. You know, I think they call this the golden age of Belgium soccer. I think Belgium wins this three nothing. Three nothing. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Uh, I'll say. I'll say three one. I think Russia will get a goal in. I'll say three one. Uh, Belgium win. Now let's go into Portugal versus Ukraine. Of course, um, Ronaldo was in this game with Portugal. Yep. Ronaldo's playing at Juventus right now. He's in the Champions League, um, but I don't think that's. I think he's been in so many different things it right now. Yeah, he's he's so experienced now. I don't think it. He scored eight goals in four UEFA club competition games against Ukrainian sides. Uh, I, I don't. Portugal lost two one in Ukraine in the 1998 World Cup, but that was so so long ago. Wow. I think Portugal wins this. I, one say, to nothing. I say Portugal 2 1. I'm going to say 1 to nothing. I don't think there's much else to say about that game. No, here, no, now, here's an interesting game. We got Albania versus Turkey. The, now, Albania was able to qualify for the Euros 2016. Yeah. Um, so they kind of punched above their weight to get there. But they didn't have a UEFA nation, a good UEFA nation like showing. Uh, Turkey is always kind of a surprise sometimes. Yeah, some, they're, they're one of those. And I know a couple. They're, they got a couple of decent players. So, I, I so know it'll, a few Turkish players. It'll be interesting to see if Albania can actually compete. Uh, but I think Turkey wins this, say, one to nothing. One to nothing. That's what I had. That's, that's what I was going to say. All right, what do we got next? Now, and uh, those, those two games were the 22nd. Yes. Now we have one game on the 23rd. Um, Italy ver to watch. Yeah. Uh, Italy, to me. Italy versus Finland. Um... It's. I want to. I'm ready to see Italy again. Of yeah. course, they didn't qualify yeah. for the World Cup, so I want to see what they're made of. Mm -hmm. uh, the last Finnish win against Italy was 1912. Wow. Okay. So. I, I don't think. I don't think Finland stands much of a chance, but I want to see Italy again, and I think Italy wins us three to nothing. It's a tough one for me. Uh... I'll say Italy 1-0. Okay. Now we got March 24th. Yeah, Sunday. Um, this is a game that's kind of interesting. Two big games. Got the Netherlands versus Germany. Um, and of course, you know, Germany had that, that they, they underwhelming had, yeah. showing at the World Cup. I, I don't even know what happened. Coming, coming off of a World Cup victory, they had a World Cup defeat in the first round. Uh, they're facing the Netherlands, who didn't even make the World Cup. Um, they beat Germany three to nothing in the UEFA Nations League in October. I think Germany's struggling right now. I think Netherlands are having a strong showing. I think Netherlands win this two to one. You think they're gonna win two one? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say one one uh, draw. I'm gonna say one one draw here. Okay. Now we get to the last game for uh, what was this Sunday? Yeah, this is Sunday. We got Hungary versus Croatia. Croatia is going to be really interesting to see. Yeah, uh, to see if they can. Yeah, to see if they can. 
Um, keep that going if Modric can keep his form. I think Hungary's a decent team, but I don't think they're near as good as Croatia. I, I don't think they're going to be able to hang with Croatia. I'm gonna, I, I know what I'm going to go with here. I'm going with a 2-0 victory. 2-0, that's, exactly, yeah, that's what I was going to say. 2-0, Croatia. I think uh, Modric, I think Modric is going to, I, I think he's going to dominate. Monday, 25th of March, first game. Kosovo uh, versus Bulgaria. I guess if you're from one of those places, it's interesting. But This is going to be... Gah! James just destroyed these two teams. Um, it's going to be an interesting game to see. It's just two two teams I don't know a lot about is all it is. It, it, which is why I have it written down. Um, okay, one of our phones is going ballistic. But Kosovo versus Bulgaria, I think... I think Bulgaria is going to win this one, but it's going to be interesting to see if Kosovo can can compete. I think they're both struggling teams. I think so. I think these are. It's always one of those games where it's they're two struggling teams, but it's going to be interesting to see who can see, overcome one of them who. Can, yeah. You know what? I'm just going to go with a Kosovo win, one to nothing, because I want to see them win. I agree with you. I know they put the one thing I read in here is that they push the ball so. Now we got Portugal again um, on the 25th versus Serbia. Serbia. Yeah. Um, now Serbia has reached two World Cups since the, the I guess, the breakup of Yugoslavia. Yeah. Um, but they haven't made any Euros, so it's going to be interesting to see if they can actually... Which is kind of odd when you think about it. But, but I don't think... Um, I don't think Serbia can really... I, I don't know. I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. I haven't gone with a draw yet. Because Portugal... Ronaldo is always a factor. But... Uh, there's a couple of young Serbian guys. You know what? I'm going to go with Serbia for a 1-0 win here. Okay. Uh, I think they'll... Uh, I guess you'd consider it an upset because Portugal won the last Euros. So, yeah. I'm going to go with Serbia for a 1-0 win. Now, our last game that we want to talk about is on March 26th. Um... You got Switzerland versus Denmark. Uh, Switzerland has some pretty decent players. I think, I think they made it to the knockout stage of the World Cup. I think so. I, I think you're right. Um, of course, they got uh, Shakiri right Den in Swiss, right? I'm pretty sure. Denmark was in the World Cup, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't think. I don't. I don't know. This is going to be a tough game, but I think Switzerland wins this two to one. Denmark won four one, but that was in 1953. <laughs> yeah, they don't have the same players they had back then. Um, okay, both both these sides made the last 16 at the World Cup. But I'm going with Switzerland. I think they have a better... I'm going to pick Switzerland to win 2-1. That's exactly what I put. Yeah. But that's just kind of a preview of the games we want to go through. Of course, yeah. the Euros are coming up, so be sure to watch that. And when the, when the, all the groups get set, qualifications are done, I'm definitely looking forward to you know yes. picking the groups and things like that. That'll be fun. I love doing stuff. And we might even do a small little prize giveaway for the Euros. Yeah. Um, if I have the money to do that, but... Uh, so we're going to give away a $5,000 gift card. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was our preview of uh, some of the European uh, qualifier games. I always like making predictions, no matter, no matter what it's on. I don't care if it's cricket. Again, we don't mean to offend you. If we do, sorry. Leave it in the comment section down below. Uh, give your opinion. But uh, I guess that's it with Cody and James. Common Sense Sports. No announcements today. No, nothing today. But uh, make sure to like, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Leave us a comment. Yep. And we'll see you in the next Have video. Have a good day.